Welcome to episode one of the Whiskey Jug. I'm your host, Josh Peters, commonly known as Schwa. And being episode one, I'm going to do a quick rundown of what the Whiskey Jug is and its purpose. And then we're going to get into a Whiskey 101. Now, the purpose of the Whiskey Jug is not just reviews and drink recipes and food recipes using whiskey, but to also explore whiskey and whiskey culture on a personal and social level. Uh, we're going to have guests on the show, have tasting panels, uh, we're going to go out and talk to, hopefully get into some of the distilleries and do tours of them and talk to the people that actually help make this beverage come into existence. Now, the term whiskey is, comes from an old Gaelic term, uh, uskeba. I think I'm pronouncing that correctly, but I'm not fluent in Gaelic, so I could be slaughtering it. Now, over the years, through our, um, English occupation of Ireland, the term was kind of changed into whiskeyba, and from there it was continually bastardized down to the current form, whiskey. Now, the term whiskey means water of life. Well, in the old Gaelic, it meant water of life, which to me there's absolutely no better way to define this delicious beverage. Now, being that the term originated from Ireland, that's where we're going to start our Whiskey 101. Uh, Irish whiskeys are typically distilled three times, which is a rather unique property of Irish whiskeys. They're aged for no less than three years. Um, they come in varieties of single malt, uh, grain, blended, and uh, pure pot stilled. And the pure pot stilled is another very unique whiskey to Ireland. Not many others do that. Um, it, they use the old copper pots, the huge ones there. Uh, if you've ever seen the Bushmills logo, they actually have the image of the copper still on them. And Bushmills is my favorite of the Irish whiskeys, and they're also one of the oldest distilleries in the world, being over 400 years old. Uh, next we're going to move on to Scotch. Now, Scotch comes in two main varieties, blended and single malt. And they're distilled typically two times. That's one of their trademarks. Um, and by Scottish law, they have to be distilled or aged for no less than three years and one day. Um, when you're coming talking about blends, the blends, they have to be aged by the youngest in the barrels or in the blends. So if you're matching like a 20 year old whisk, uh, scotch with a 12 year old scotch to get the right flavor, you have to call it a 12 year old. Um, on single malts, they're more of what a lot of scotch aficionados tend to lean towards because they have, they're a bit tougher to create and to keep that same consistent flavor because all, all whiskeys are done are aged in oak barrels and that can a lot of times mix with types of grains and type of growing since they've had, they can taste a lot different and really affect the taste. Um, back in the day, long, many, 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 many years ago, uh, single malt scotches were sold at all sorts of uh, grocery stores and neighborhood stores all throughout Scotland. And one of the problems is they were a wee bit inconsistent in their flavoring. And so our good friend, Johnny Walker, came along and changed that by be really perfecting the art of blending scotches, and that's where we can get it from. Uh, another thing to note about scotch is they oftentimes have a smoky flavor. And when they're cooking the grains and preparing them to be used in their mash, that they uh, really, they, they use an open kiln system compared to Irish, which use a closed kiln system. And so they treat it with peat smoke. And that gives it a smoky flavor, which some people really, really, truly enjoy about scotches. Next up, we're going to move over to some of the, the American varieties. Now, when in America, when you're talking about the named types of whiskeys like bourbon, rye, wheat, uh, corn and oat, and so forth, in the mash that is made to make the whiskey, it has to contain at least 51%. So for a, rye, a bourbon, it has to be at least 51% corn. For a rye whiskey, it has to be at least 51% rye. Wheat whiskeys have to be at least 51% wheat. Um, when you get into some of the different, a little bit different is corn whiskeys. Now, corn whiskeys have to be at least 80% corn, oat whiskeys at least 80% oat. And both corn and oat whiskeys are 
are typically aged a lot less. Uh, corn whiskeys, for example, don't have to have the mandatory two-year aging process. They can skip aging altogether and go straight to the bottle. Um, oat whiskey, same thing. Sometimes they're aged for a couple hours, half an hour or so. And corn whiskeys, typically not aged more than six months at the most in oak barrels. Um, one major thing to note about American whiskeys is the difference between bourbon or bourbon and Tennessee whiskeys. Now, tennis, the difference, it, the only difference is that Tennessee whiskeys are filtered through a uh, sugar maple charcoal. So it adds a little bit extra sweetness to it. It also removes a lot of different impurities and things that you get through bourbon. Other than that, they're typically the same. They're 51% corn mash. Um, of the American whiskeys, my favorite is rye whiskeys. I think that they just have a very unique flavor that I find appealing. And uh, so we'll actually be, we'll have a whole episode about them. We'll actually have a whole episode of Tennessee and bourbon and Irish and Scotch and single malt. So we'll get into more depth about all of those. Um, last but not least, Canadian whiskeys. Now, Canadian whiskeys are typically made of rye. And so they're very similar to the American rye whiskeys, but they do have some distinct flavors all their own with, you know, everything else they use to make up the other 49 plus percent of their mash or however they're concocting it. And by Canadian law, uh, Canadian whiskey, Canadian rye, and rye whiskeys all originating from Canada mean the same thing. They are legally indistinguishable. You, so they all mean the exact same thing. Uh, one of the more popular types is Crown Royal, which uh, if you've ever had it, has a very sweet flavor to it, which is why a lot of people mix it with things like Coca-Cola or Pepsi or whatever your favorite cola product is to make the Crown and Coke. And it's got a very inherent sweetness to it. And that just comes from the various uses of the mash and barrels and such. Um, this is a good representation of what most people can find at their state liquor store or local liquor store, the grocery store, or however you know it's ran in your particular state. Um, you should be able to come across these different types. And you know I've got in front of me Maker's Mark and Jack Daniels and High West, which you may have a little bit trouble finding because it's made here in Utah. Uh, Glenn Levitt, Shavaz Regal, the uh, Johnny Walker, Bush Mills, Michael Collins, Jameson, and then Pendleton and Crown Royal here. And you should have no trouble finding these. Uh, they're a good representation. Now, that's not to say that it's the only places that whiskey are coming in from. Uh, a lot of whiskeys are starting to come in from Australia and Finland, Germany, India, Japan. Um, there's some good Welsh whiskeys out there that are coming in. Uh, they've also got some from Europe, Brazil, Argentina, Taiwan, South Africa, and New Zealand that are starting to pop up uh, from a bit newer distilleries, a bit younger. Of course, they've had to have been around for a couple of years so that the whiskey has had a proper amount of time to age. Um, but and as we get a hold of some of them, uh, we'll definitely be reviewing them here on the show and we'll be doing tasting panels and different things coming up. So. That's it for episode one. Hope you enjoyed it, and until episode two, cheers.